There you go, get him. There you go, running. Running. Get him. Get him, get him, get him. Get him, boy. Get him. Uh, he's caught in that tree. Oh, he got him. Get him, boy. Get him. You know what time it is. Welcome back to another episode of Get Him Greg Fishing. I'm Greg Williams, and today I'm with my father, Clyde P. Williams, and we're fishing on the Catawba River. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Get Him Greg Williams. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Get Him Greg Fishing. I'm Greg Williams, and today I'm with my father, Clyde P. Williams, and we're on uh, the Catawba River fishing for catfish. It's uh, about mid April. Uh, the fish are heading upstream. And uh, where we're we at right now, we're kind of in between the number nine highway bridge and uh, the Lansford Canal uh, in basically a little area where there's a lot of rocks. And uh, we're in about four foot of water and uh, we're using some uh, cut gizzard shad uh, and some uh, chicken. And we're just uh, throwing them out and uh, seeing what we can get. So uh, hopefully we'll catch a couple of them today and uh, we'll get them. Stay tuned. We put our boat in at the number nine landing headed upstream in an attempt to catch the pre-spawn catfish. Pre-spawn occurs when the water temperature begins to reach 60 degrees up to 70 degrees. This is a great time to catch your favorite catfish regardless if it's blues, flatheads, or channel gaps. During this time, catfish will move off of their winter beds and head upstream into creeks, streams, and downstreams of dams to find warm water to lay their eggs. Catfish will move based upon water temperature, and since catfish do not have a calendar, water temperature controls everything. Be sure to use extreme caution when going past the tip of this island. I have been warned by locals not to enter these waters, and to especially not go down the left-hand side waterway passage of the island as it is too shallow. If you do attempt to go past the tip of the island, use the right-hand side waterway passage and stay to the left-hand side of the river near the bank. The section of the river we chose today is where there is a change along the surface of the bottom of the river where mud turns to rocks. Once you pass the point, you will notice on the sonar an abundance of rocks and fallen trees that are along the water's edge. Prior to entering this section of the river, we raised our motor and used our trolling motor to troll around the rocks and fallen trees, which were all along the sides of the bank. We cast our lines as close to the fallen trees as possible, as well as the bank in hopes of catching a big blue or flathead. Blue catfish will deposit their eggs between rocks in root wides, depressions, undercut banks, and other areas protected from strong current. On the other hand, flatheads prefer sites such as hollow logs, excavated caves in clay banks, and root masses from downed trees. Channel cats usually select dark, secluded spots such as piles of woody debris and spaces between and underneath rocks. The best place to look for these fish are where you have warm water flow, such as creeks where they have humps, holes, trees, or rocks where catfish can ambush their play from behind the current break. straight towards me right now. Had me on a log or something. I can feel it. Feel it on the, on the line. Fifteen point five. Fifteen 
Yeah. He looked pretty good when he slashed that water just in. <laughs> Coming straight at us. That's a nice one. about a 12 pounder. got here is a double rig uh, with two eight alt circle hooks uh, tied together in uh, with a santee rig kind of a modified santee rig and we're putting uh, chicken on that one but uh, a lot of the other ones we have uh, is cut up uh, gizzard shed right here and uh, what we're doing we're sitting in about I'd say three four foot of water um, and uh, right here in the Catawba River, and uh, we just throwing our baits out, uh, kind of like a spider, some near the bank, some out near the middle, and uh, some out near the other bank, and uh, just seeing what we can catch. So uh, we'll catch them up. All right, come on, baby. downstream and troll slowly upstream parallel to the bank watching the sonar for ups and downs then when you find a hole and feel the boat is directly over it pick out a reference spot on the bank you can now motor upstream and anchor the boat casting distance away from the hole cast a baited float rig directly to the hole let it settle and wait for the hit if you haven't had a bite in 20 to 30 minutes troll up the bank until you find another likely spot and anchor again continue doing this working your way upstream and refreshing first one hole and then another. Using this strategy will surely put a few fish in your boat. As you can probably tell by the sound on our camera, the wind was very strong and was blowing against the current. We ended up having to throw out both the front and back anchors to keep us from spinning around as the wind blew from our backside. Do you want this one? Nah. Feels about like the other one. He might be a little bigger than the other one. He's coming straight at us now. Than the other one. <sighs> Why is she little fella? Yeah, he's big. I think he's a little bigger than the other one. Simmer down. I'm gonna let you go in a second. 
He's about 12 pounds. What we're using today is shad. I'm just cutting down their back, kind of a triangle right here, cut the tail off. I can get a little bit more blood in the water. And uh, then we hooking them up, trying this new system we got here where we got double uh, hooks and I'm just hooking them through the eyeballs here. Letting the second hook just sit free. So far, we had pretty good success with that today. Probably a 10 pounder there. Yeah. Yeah, I see it right there. It's, uh, it's about a 10 pound fish. I like to change my bait out about every 30 minutes. This will put an extra scent into the water and will likely help catch more fish. The rods we are using today are Rippin' Lips Super Cat rods paired with Disciplin Chaos 50 reels. The reels have been filled with 50 pound high vis yellow line so we can better see the line movement in the water. The fishing rigs are a modified Santee rig where we are using 50 pound monofilament leader attached to an 8 aught circle hook with a float cork, rattler, and a smat swivel attached to a 3 ounce weight. You hang side though? Got lucky with him. He got under the jaw. About six pounds. Oh yeah. Come on. Come on. That didn't seem to jerk good. What we got here? Right, we have a runner too. Hey, he's gonna be a nice one, Clyde P. Oh yeah.
he was ski gavin dallin wasn't he <laughs> <laughs> hey, one thing, that was a fun fight there. Yeah. <laughs> he got a little meat to him, too. Yeah. Give me them pliers and on that. Uh, he's got a big old mouth on him. He wasn't going to get out, though, was loose. No, he wasn't getting loose. Got him. We'll put you back in the water here in just a minute, fella. Appreciate the fight. I like seeing them run like that. Yeah. He have no, no word that way, there ain't nowhere to put <laughs> two foot of water. <laughs> this one might be the one day here. All right, buddy, simmer down. It's gonna be about 15, 16 pounds on that. Thirteen point six. Yeah, check, check it All right. Only thirteen pounds. All right. Hey, I tell you, I believe that's the best fight that one of them put up today. That's a good fight. We'll get you on back down in it, Bo. Caught some nice fish today. You know, that fish Pop Pop just caught was in 2.4 foot of water. We're in a little cove, a little branch, I guess you could say, off the main river here. A little over two foot of water. Come up in here, just see what we catch, and he got him a big one. Hard to believe he'd catch a 15 pound catfish, <laughs> two foot of water. <laughs> but he just did it. Before you leave, be sure to check out our description page below. This page gives you a brief description of the video you are currently watching along with the fishing gear we use during the filming of this video. Click onto the show more link to view all of this information. In upcoming episodes, we'll begin a new segment where we test out products that are sent to us. If you would like your product to be featured on one of our upcoming episodes, our contact and shipping information is also included on this page. I want to thank you for watching our videos, and if you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel to get notifications as to when our new videos are available. Meanwhile, here are a few more videos that I think you will like.